In this video I will show you how I painted this and I will say some very strange things. Wishy-washy horse? What's a, what's a wishy-washy horse? Although I uh, liked the wish raccoons in the old version. As I put Google Translate to the test. That's the car, I'm Alex and you're watching Winter Wolf Miniatures. English is not my first language, in fact it's my third one after Swedish and sarcasm. I read a lot and mostly in English and people often ask me about that. I always have the same answer, I want to read the book in the language it's written. Otherwise you are basically reading a different book written by the translator, right? What? Maybe not. I just don't want the story, I also want the exact words the author used to describe it. When I say that I sometimes get the obvious follow up. Why don't you read Swedish authors? Well I do sometimes and there are a couple of good ones, but come on, think about it. According to Google, the omnipotent all-knowing supreme leader, <laughs> about 10 million people speak Swedish. Bonus fact. Most of them in Sweden. And about 1.35 billion people speak English. So let's say there is, would be such a list of the world's 100 best books. What's the odds any of them are going to be in Swedish? Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. For some it might, for others maybe not. But it doesn't matter. It got me thinking however about a silly video idea. And uh, so here we are. I always write my scripts in English and I also think in English when I do, if that makes sense. But what would happen if I wrote my script in Swedish and then used Google Translate to um, translate it into English? Well, let's find out. My original plan was to do a cold read, but I couldn't resist having a little peek. And I was very impressed. Google Translate didn't actually butcher it too much. I mean, it's still a bit strange in places, but it almost makes sense. These, these kinds of translator programs have obviously come a very long way. And English and Swedish are also very similar languages. I played around with it because I of course wanted to break it. So I just put it through a bunch of different languages on its way to English. And um, yeah, that did the trick. I will read that as well, but first let's go through the one where I simply translated it from Swedish to English. The model is assembled and covered in black primer. And the first thing and the first thing I do after that is to spray the entire figure with a warm medium brown using the paint sprayer. It will be much easier to get the red surface nice on a brown background than on a black. But it also provides a quick and easy basis for all the small details we want to be brown. When I was done with the first medium brown color, I quickly switched to a lighter one. No, I quickly switched to a lighter shade with more yellow pigments and sprayed some more. This time mainly from above. Then we start working with the brush. I use a red color from Vallejo called Heavy Red from their extra covering game range. It normally covers reasonably well even on dark surfaces. But here on the brown base it becomes quite fancy. Quite fancy. Immediately. I'm going to add another layer on top of the red, but first I want to get as many of the base colors in place as possible. Next will be the black details and here to and here too I use the, an extra covering color from Vallejo called Heavy Charcoal. It is a dark grey with blue tones. The best color is... <laughs> what? what the fuck? The best color is a layer of tinny tin. 
on all details that are to be gold. I like Tinny Tin and think it's very nice on a brown background like this. It makes a good base for gold details. If you paint it over a black primer after one layer, it becomes in this case another way, another very nice version of itself. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the gold on this model will be a little accent and to the red <laughs> and does, huh? Hang on. The gold on this model will be a little accent to the red and doesn't have to be that strong. No. <coughs> However, I will add a much more golden gold later on it, in selected places and the contrast between them will make a big impact with a little effort. Hopefully. This part of the armor I just covered with gun metal and will later cover with some Agrax Earth Jade. I mix a little steel grey, another but slightly lighter cold blue grey with heavy charcoal and mark the points on the fabric that I want to be a little better defined. I later mixed more and more of the lighter color into the potion and work my way up to a finish I can be happy with. And someone is hammering in the room above me for some reason. I later mix more and more of the lighter color in the potion and work my way up to a finish I can be happy with. This is... hang on. This is exactly what I sat and painted late at night for a while and a little more after I should have retired for the day and the paint on my palette had dried a little. The next day when I looked at what I had accomplished, I wasn't happy at all. It got lumpy and uneven and I should redo it. A little bone white on the horse's face here. It's a bit strange actually that the head of the horse that has rotted It's a bit strange actually that the head of the horse that had that has rotten seems to have rotted away much more than the rest of the body. The rest of the horse actually appears on closer inspection to have escaped almost Fahan The rest of the horse actually appears on closer inspection to have escaped almost untouched. The composition of the colors on the model will be nice in any case, but I would have found it tough if the whole horse was skeletonized. Although I like the wishy-washy horse. <laughs> what's a, what's a wishy-washy horse? The old version was on. Blood red is the next color and I use it to highlight all the edges of the red armor. This is a huge job, but with a little film technology it's quickly solved. Just cut the crap out. There we go. Agrax Earthshade makes everything look fantastic. Yes. Or not all. Yes. Or not all in this case. Only the silver grey armor pieces at the bottom and the large gold details. The brown shower dulls down the gold details more outwardly while also highlight the definitions better, because that makes sense. Mm, that's right, I also painted the shield here. I wasn't sure how to do it, but I ended up, but it ended up being turquoise. Speaking of defining, the next step is exactly that. I use black templar to gently dab to gently dab in and draw some shading between the different armor panels, the different armor plates, to increase the definition a bit. It's a bit fiddly and takes some time, but it's worth it. Time to polish up the gold a bit and I use a very shiny and yellow gold color for this. There will be great contrast between this very shiny and the previously now matted surface 
which makes it very easy to get a very nice and deep golden shade with just a few carefully selected and placed dots. Dabs, I'm sorry. I will tinker a bit with the very I will tinker a bit with the very last details, including the horse's hair and the weapon. Then this model is basically finished. Not quite as on the box, but that wasn't the point either. Okay, so what you might have got from that, it got most things just about right. Only when I really made it difficult for it, did it falter to And my phone is ringing. Shut up. Only when I did it really difficult for it, did it falter to understand what I was trying to convey. When I put it through a couple of other languages, however, it began to simply come up with stuff. But honestly, I'm still amazed about how much it got right. So let's read it again. The model is assembled and primed with black, and the first thing I do after that is to spray paint the entire... Sorry, I added words. The model is assembled and primed with black, and the first thing I do after that is spray paint the entire figure with a warm medium brown. A red surface on a brown background will be easier to make beautiful than a black one. And it also provides a quick and easy base for all the details we want to be brown. After I was done with the first medium brown, I quickly switched to a lighter color with more yellow pigments and sprayed a little more. This time mostly from above. Then we start working with brushes. I used the red from Vallejo called Heavy Red from their extra game range. It usually covers pretty well, even on dark surfaces, but here it's instantly gorgeous over a brown base. I will add another layer on top of the red, but first I want to get as much of the base color as possible. Next up will be the black details, and here I am also using an additional coating color from Vallejo called Heavy Charcoal. It is dark grey with blue tones. The best color is a coat of tinny tin. Over all the details, which should be gold. I like tinny tin and think it's very pretty on such a brown background. It makes a good base for gold details. If you paint it over a black base, after one coat, in this case, it becomes another very beautiful version of itself. The gold in this model will have a slight accent of red and should not be too strong. But later I will add more gold and gold in selected areas and the contrast between them will have a big impact with a little effort, hopefully. I'm just coating this part of the armor with gunmetal, and then I'll cover it with some Agrax Earthshade. I, mixed, I mix a little steel grey with another, but slightly lighter cool blue-grey heavy charcoal, and mark the points on the material that I want to define a little more. I then mix more of the lighter color in the drink, and work my way up to a finish I can be happy with. This is exactly what I sat and painted late at night for a while before I had to stop for the day and after the point and after the paint on my palette had dried a bit I painted a bit more. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the next day when I looked at what I had accomplished I was not happy at all. It turned out lumpy bumpy and I would have to re and I would have to redo it if I could. Here, the horse has something off-white on its face. <laughs> it's a bit strange that the head of a rotten horse looks more rotten than the rest of the body. What? Upon closer inspection, the rest of the horse appears to have escaped almost unharmed. The color scheme on the model would be nice anyway, but it would be difficult if the whole horse was a skeleton. The color scheme on the model would be nice anyway, but it would be difficult if the whole horse was skeleton. Although I like the wish... <laughs> what? what? Although 
I uh, liked the wish raccoons in the old version. The wish raccoons. <laughs> what the fuck's a wish raccoon? <laughs> Blood red is the next color, and I use it to highlight all the edges of the red armor. It's a big deal. But it's quickly solved with a little film technique. <laughs> what? Okay. It's a big deal. But it's quickly solved with a little film technique. Just cut the dwarf. <laughs> Just cut the dwarf. Agrax Earthshade does everything great. Yes. Or in this case, not at all. <laughs> Only silver grey armor underneath and large gold details. A shower of brown accentuates accentuates the definition it's 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 like it's trying to use difficult words accentuates definition better a shower of brown accentuates and defines better while the gold details appear more subdued that's right i pulled the shield here as well i didn't know how to do it <laughs> I didn't know how to do it, but it turned turquoise. Speaking of defining, the next step is just that. I used Black Templar to put some shading between the different armor plates to increase the definition a bit. It's a bit difficult and takes some time, but it's worth it. It's time to polish the gold a bit and for that I use a very bright and yellow gold color. There will be great contrast between this very bright and previously dull surface. This makes it very easy to achieve a very beautiful and deep golden color with just a few carefully selected and placed drops. And that sentence is almost, almost perfect. <clears throat> I'll dig into the final touches a bit, including the horse's hair, the gun, and you are they basically done with this model. Not like the box, but it wasn't either. Thank you so much for watching, uh, beware of the wish raccoons, and I'll see you soon.